Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our beloved fellow worker. What a lovely thing to say. This man is a good friend. And Paul calls him a fellow worker. To Aphia, our sister, presumably Philemon's wife. Archippus, presumably their son. Our fellow soldier. Now just ponder this picture for a moment. Why was Paul such a good friend with this man Philemon? He calls Philemon a fellow worker. Philemon had an interest in church planting as well. Philemon had an interest in the gospel as well. Philemon had a wife that loved God. Philemon had a son, it seems, who was active in the church. That, it goes on and says, that meets and greet the church that meets in your house. What a fantastic thing to see a whole family serving God. You know how proud I am when I see my kids involved in church and serving God? Answer, very. This, this epistle is being read out to them. We've got this beautiful family presented here. This is what Paul says. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul has stated his predicament and he's, he's got a problem. The, the occasion for this epistle is a young man who we haven't been introduced to yet. And you can imagine the Sunday this was read. <clears throat> if Aristarchus turned up prior to the Sunday when this was being read, then news would have already got around. But chances are this was being read, chances are, as Aristarchus came in and others came in. Who would have come in with Aristarchus? A fellow by the name of Onesimus. Who's Onesimus? He's a runaway slave that Philemon owned. Philemon was his master. This is the occasion. So Paul's got a problem. What's the problem? Onesimus, uh, um, Onesimus has, has come to him in, in the Caesarea prison. He's turned up to Paul, which I find really interesting because if you have this picture of Paul being harsh and all the rest of it, he's run from Philemon and come to Paul. Um, and, and Paul, this is where I think we need to change our picture of Paul because Paul has loved this guy. In fact, Paul says, I've adopted him as a son. See what Paul's going to pray for Philemon and his family? This is it, verse 6. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. What's he saying? He's saying that whenever you share your faith, I pray that someone will get it, accept it, receive it, and that they'll become a fruitful Christian. Give me some of that, please. <laughs> and that's what Paul's praying for this guy. Now, it's also quite interesting that the first thing Paul does, um, Philemon, I'm writing to you and your beautiful family. As I think of you and your beautiful family, I just thank God. And I pray this wonderful prayer for you, that you'll be so absorbed by the gospel that every time you share it, people will come to effective faith in Christ. Where's this going? Where's this epistle going? Where's it going? Paul's putting the whole focus on the gospel. It's interesting. Now, we all know why he's writing this. And look at what he's doing. This is the gospel that he's talking about. This is Paul's prayer. Now, we, we read on verse 7. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother. Whoa, boy, these guys, these guys really are close. These are good Friends, he doesn't throw that title around, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Now, if you do a word study on that word refreshed in the New Testament, you're going to find it means someone has provided material aid. So for Christ Jesus, verse 10, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus. Now he's getting to the point whose father I became in my imprisonment. I'm sending him to you, back to you, sending my very heart. Verse 13, I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment. Why? For the gospel. Oh, he's a cunning old bloke, isn't he? For the gospel. What's he saying? 
He's serving on your behalf to promote the gospel. Mm, that's good. I like that. I'm going to take notes on this. That's very good. I like that. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own free will. Oh, this is going to be a wonderful time of fellowship after the service in this church. For this is perhaps why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever. Again, it's an echo of the gospel. This is what the gospel does. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me. But how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord? Wow. Wow. Oh, boy. Verse 17. So if you consider me your partner. Here's Paul's confidence. This is why he could write to his friend. Hey, come on. We're partners in this enterprise. And I know you and you know me and you're probably one of my closest friends on the planet. So if you consider me like that, if you, then I want you to receive him as you would receive me. Verse 18, if he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. Which is interesting because one of his, probably one of his biggest financial benefactors would have been Philemon. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it after you give it to me. To say nothing. Oh boy, here we go. Here comes the big gun. And he's only just going to touch on it. And again, it's an echo of the gospel. Here he goes. To say nothing of your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Have you been hurt or offended by a fellow believer? Then consider the message of Philemon. Do the affairs of this life, like runaway slaves, weigh more heavily on your mind than the cause of the gospel? Are you able to overlook differences to maintain a friendship? And here's the last question I want to ask. In what ways are we like Onesimus? In what ways are we like Onesimus? Slaves to sin, under a cruel taskmaster, running into the arms of Jesus, being saved and set free, then sent back into the world. Maybe you can think of some other ways. 